Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to install Arch on ARM right after this. So, <laughs> I'm a noob when it comes to Arch. I have, I have to admit, I have played with it a little bit on x86, not very much. So, I thought, since I have a bunch of these machines around and they're available, I thought, well, I, I want to learn Arch. I've got this machine sitting here. I think I will, I will put it to use and install ARM on it. And so, what I'm going to do today is uh, we're going, we're going to use an Odroid XU4 and that's relatively old it's it's you know it's almost five years old now uh, but it was brought out uh, as a replacement for the XU3 it has a Samsung Exynos 5422 octa-core it is 28 mil nanometer technology so yeah it's pretty old um, it uses an ARM Cortex A15 at, at 2 point now Samsung says 2.1 and Odroid quotes 2.0, so I would go with Odroid's spec because they probably have declocked it some, and that's a quad core. And then there's another quad core chip, the uh, A7, which operates at 1.4, and, and that's typical with cell phones. You have one high power chip and then one low power chip, so as the battery, to prevent the battery from draining too quickly, they'll switch to the lower power, uh, lower power modes on the CPU. Now the Odroid under Linux will prefer to run code on the A15 and when the A15 becomes saturated it'll transfer it to the A7 as well so all eight will start working. It has a Mali T628, uh, an MP6 GPU. That uh, sounds like a history lesson, doesn't it? 2 gig of, uh, of uh, <laughs> LDDR3 RAM and uh, uh, it has a micro SD slot. It also has an EMMC slot. So you have your choice between where you want to install uh, your operating systems. Today I'm going to be using the micro SD slot. Uh, I, I don't know if I have an EMMC that's available. I might. I mean, just need to go check my drawer. But I'm going to use the SD slot. I have a new one for that so we can, get, we can do that. It has a USB port and, a USB, and two USB 3 ports. It also has gigabit Ethernet which is kind of nice and HDMI 1.4a. Uh, it, it takes uh, a, a 5 volt uh, 4 amp DC, uh, 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 don, uh, uh, I call them vampires, but uh, uh, that, that device, I've never really seen it draw that much power. I've only seen it draw about 20 watts usually on the XU4. And then it has a cooling fan on top which arguably does work or not. <laughs> the XU4s can throttle when they get very warm. So, I mean, this is not the latest uh, single board computer, but hey, it's what I got and that's the point, right? Use what you have. Um, Otroid uses a customized kernel. Currently, it's built on 414.133 and I suspect, not sure, but I I'm suspecting that, that uh, Arch got that kernel from Odroid because I know there are specific patches in that version of the kernel for the Odroid uh, XU4 that have to do with uh, things like uh, the a HDMI and the audio and, and probably some other things. Uh, I'm going to be installing this on a Samsung Evo 32 gig uh, SD card and so yeah let's let's see how this goes. It's probably going to end badly but hey I'm willing to give it a try. So unfortunately I don't have I don't have a camera here um, that I can show you what I'm doing, but basically I'm taking an SD card and putting it into the machine. And there it is, is SD1 and 2, so I will U-mount those. it helped us split, right? And yeah, 
it's, it's gone. All right, so I'm gonna be using um, the Arch Wiki for ARM instructions, and those you can find right here. At this, I'll put this. I'll I'll put this at the, in the video for you. If you have, there's more than this. You can you can install Arch obviously on Raspberry Pi, and there's some others out there that it installs on as well as well as the uh, as the Odroid. But since they they uh, do allow that, I'm gonna try that. So the first thing we want to do according to this is I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's there. So the first thing I want to do is uh, is zero out the drive, and you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and become root. Uh, I've heard that there's some uh, there's some uh, nuances that you can run into if you don't do this install as root. So I'm not going to uh, experiment to that that degree. And. Uh, Looks like, uh, and also be careful of which drive you're picking up because DD does not care where it writes. So if you put in the uh, device for your boot drive, uh, you won't be booting next time because you'll be zeroing out the uh, the super block on your, on your hard drive and Linux probably won't like that. So it says to reserve eight meg and so let's give that a try. That's all done. And it says next thing is to do an F disk. And do a print. Get rid of the ones that are there. Primary. Once one. And it says to start this block at 4096. So we'll do that. Write it. Not three, not five. Might help to use the SD1 that I just created. Then we'll let that create the file system. I think I've got a root partition left over from earlier. I also have the arch here as well. Yeah, I do. So I can just go ahead and mount that. It, says, it just says to make directory root, and then it says to mount. As root. So we'll make sure that it mounted it. It did. And then it says to do a B. It says to do a W get on the, we'll just do everything just for correctness. So that we don't skip any steps. I'm going to copy and paste the, the uh, long link in from the uh, wiki. Now, this says XU3. That's okay. XU3 is, is, has a binary compatibility with XU4, and that's you'll see that even if you download images from their site, that it's an XU3 image that you're actually downloading, but it's fine. It'll execute just fine on XU4. Uh, the XU3, I think, had the exact same processor as the XU4. The only difference, I believe, was in the added on some additional peripherals to the XU4. I don't know. Don't quote me. I didn't own an XU3. XU4 is actually where I started in SBCs, um, as well as the Raspberry Pi, of course. And so, all right, now we have, we should have our image as dot one, and that's okay. Um, we'll do a BSD tar and it says XPF and then an arch and it wants me to target the root directory so we'll do that and this I'm looking it is writing on the SD card yep that looks good, and it says the CD to root boot. There's uh, the XU4 uses U-boot. There's a number of, uh, of, of SBCs, single board computers that use U-boot. That's not unusual, but uh, this is a little unusual. I haven't, I haven't ever seen this before. SD fusing to uh, actually 
uh, I guess to load these we can go look but I, I assume it's it's taking the u-boot bin and sticking it in the eight gig that eight megabytes that we reserved on the uh, front of the drive so it says to do the SD fusing and then give it the device name and that's also DD um, so be careful with that one too because like I said DD does not care Uh, it's putting the BL, BL1 bin, BL2 bin, and then the U-boot. SBCs don't have BIOSes. Not in the ARM world, anyway. Not in the, uh, not in the, we can't, <laughs> not, not as such, anyway, not as such. As what you're familiar with on a PC. Okay, so the next step according to this is I can back out and you mount root. Now that should do a sync, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do one afterwards as well. Just to make sure. It should be unmounted, but I know better. Sometimes they don't flush. Okay, uh, we should be ejected, and now, uh, again, I apologize, but what I'm doing is I'm simply inserting the SD card in the SD slot of the XU4. I could hold it up, but everybody does that. I just, I'll get a camera working, and we'll do this the right way down the road. So I powered it up. I see the lights are coming on. It looks like it's doing its initial test. And the XU4, if it has a valid kernel, the, there's a blue CPU activity light that will start flashing, and that is flashing. I see activity on the, the gigabit ethernet, and so uh, I'm gonna go over to my firewall and just check to see if it received a IP address. And I see that it has. I'm going to back out of root. I don't like to run root for very long. So it says to SSH in this alarm and then use the... I, let's put it this way. I don't like to be root any longer than I have to be. Um, so I'm going to use the IP address that I saw in the DHCP HCP, uh, leases. And yep, there's definitely something there. Uh, password is alarm. And we are in. I'm just curious. Uh, uh, bear with me. <laughs> I'm just curious as to what. Yeah, 414.133. So that's the Odroid kernel. I know they're working on one for 5.3. I don't know if they'll release one for the uh, XU4. I'm not sure what their plans are with it. They are still selling it. So I suspect um, maybe going forward, it, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, come out with the uh, 5.3. Don't know. So the next step I need to do here is uh, I need to become root. And that password is root. And <laughs> probably be a good idea to change these, huh? <laughs> so I need to uh, init the Pac-Man key. Uh, and then I need to, I guess, download the packages, or at least the directory of packages. Yeah, that looks right. That looks right. I'll go. Okay. So let's see what happens. Let's do a Pac-Man. Let's see if I remember right. It's minus capital S. U or S Y U. A little rusty. Like I said, I've used it a year ago a little bit. Didn't spend. I am a noob, but uh, with the uh, arch, but got to start somewhere, right? Uh, you know, this machine may seem underpowered to people that have x86s, but uh, you'd be surprised how well this machine performs as a server. 
Servers don't use a whole lot of uh, CPU cycles uh, unless you're running things that are computationally uh, intensive, like uh, if you're, you know, if you're, you have some uh, numerical analysis systems that you're running. But if you're doing things like file servers and you're doing things like uh, Docker, you know, the, the footprints are pretty low. And the reason for that is to be able to run more of them on one box. So the, the software footprints on servers aren't, is not huge. Uh, a lot, you know, it's pretty easy to oversize a server. But in, in hopes that you're going to use it all. But, you know, in honesty, in most of the, my experiences in the server farms, it's rare to see a, a server up over 50% in utilization. That's total utilization. It's really rare to see it that high. People start panicking when it hits 70. It's usually all the triggers and the alarm bells start going off. Fix me, fix me. Um, okay. Or the temperature monitors go off the wall. I've seen that happen a couple times too. Then they start running around with fans. <laughs> All right. So it looks like I have a I have a working Pac-Man. So let's uh, while we while we're here, I want to get a couple things. I want uh, HTOP and I want NeoFetch and I want fail to ban. I also want crony uh, and aid. I'll probably get a few more things, but this is usually where I start in order to harden off the system. I want to play with uh, NF tables. I understand that the implementation on Arch is really good, and so I want to do that. Now, I'm probably not going to put a graphical user interface on this. Uh, it's not that the XU4 won't do it. It certainly will. It's just that uh, I'm, I'm really more interested to see how this works as a server. And, and I like to maybe play around with Docker a little bit on it and, and kind of and see how that all works. Okay, so let's see how much memory we're using. About, uh, it's like it's flipping between 89, 91, somewhere right in there. Not too bad, not too bad. Now, the Ubuntu servers I have are usually about 20 to 30 meg higher than that uh, when they're coming up out of the box for the first time. But And you'll notice that the loads on, on the uh, 5 through 8, those are the high speed cores. Uh, the 1 through 4 are the low speed. So as the process load on 5 through 8 picks up, I don't know exactly what it's doing at the moment. It's probably, it's got some background jobs that are running, I see. Of course, HTOP's running, and there's also something called MANDB, so it looks like it's cataloging the MAN pages. But uh, uh, when that load drops down, goes up like that, you'll see some load appear on, on uh, the 1 through 4. The, uh, the kernel that's in uh, the Odroid's very good about managing stuff like this. Now, it is possible to throttle. <laughs> it is possible to uh, overheat and throttle an Odroid, uh, even with that fan on there, and I see it spinning. So uh, I'll probably add some additional cooling to this box so that I can run some tests on it and get a little bit more familiar with art. So um, with that, I'm going to do, just so you know, it really is on a Odroid XU4. I'll bring it fetch. And um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. Uh, I certainly didn't expect it to go quite this well, and it went very easily indeed. Uh, kudos to the Arch folks for their uh, their wiki and their instructions. It seems to work just great. And uh, I'll keep you posted over time uh, how things go. One thing I did want to uh, talk and maybe do a video on later is a update on what's going on with uh, Silver Blue. Uh, it's running fantastic. I, I am very happy with it. And uh, so I'll go over some of the things that I've done with that as well. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you again real soon. And bye for now.